Hello, in this video I will talk about multiprocessing in Python and um, yeah, the multiprocessing module of Python. Um, yeah, so as I said in earlier, vid earlier videos, uh, multiprocessing really allows Python to run code um, at the same time, so parallel in parallel instead of concurrently. And uh, this is because a new process will basically clone the existing one um, have a new part in the memory um, so it will not use the same memory as the main process and therefore it also has a different interpreter and the global interpreter lock of the one process doesn't interfere with the global interpreter lock of the other one so um, yeah when one is locked the other is still able to run um, as before um, yeah but note that when you create multiple processes in your Python programs this will increase your memory um, consumption uh, with each process, since each process needs new memory. And uh, yeah, if you have very memory intensive programs and want to uh, work on yeah, some data, uh, some large amount of data with multiple, multiple processes, and you use multiprocessing in the most basic form, then you will have um, yeah, lots of copies of this data in your memory, and this can quickly lead to your memory, um, yeah, being full, and then you, yeah, your your program either crashes um, because it has a memory out of, uh, yeah, it has a out of memory error, or um, yeah, it's not able to uh, finish, or it starts swapping um, onto the disk, and this, yeah, it's not really nice because then it again. It takes a long, uh, a long amount of time to finish computation. Um, okay, so uh, using the multiprocessing module, um, we have a very similar interface to the threading um, module. And here, uh, first of all, I want to show you the process class. And process is really very similar to the thread class. And it even has, uh, yeah, functions, methods that are called the same way. So uh, it's very easy to understand how the process uh, interface works when you already know how the thread interface works. So let's import the th this process and uh, look at this example of counting down again. And we have seen with the multi-threading that counting down didn't increase the speed uh, so using multi-threading in this countdown function didn't increase the speed. And uh, when we count down, so call this countdown function five times on different threads, then it actually takes longer than if we do uh, this sequentially on one thread because of the overhead. But now we want to try this out using multiprocessing. And for that, um, we now create a list of processes instead of threads and in each iteration of this loop, we append a new process. And again, as with a thread uh, class, we have to specify a target function and the arguments. And here we just specify the countdown function from above. And as an argument, we just pass the index i, which is used to then print um, yeah, the index of the um, process that has finished counting down as soon as as is uh, as it has uh, finished counting down. And then, uh, yeah, again, like with the threads, we have to call the start method to start the process. And then in the end, we can call this join uh, method to yeah let the main thread wait until all the processes have finished executing. And then uh, this, is uh, this is different from the thread. It is very important that we call this close method and close will remove the process from the uh, computer. If we don't call this close, then we will have um, yeah the subprocess just left doing nothing on our computer, consuming some memory. And if we do this often enough uh, without closing, then um, at some point the whole system will run out of memory because um, these processes are not killed when the main Python pro uh, program is killed, but uh, they will just stay there. So here is important to close these processes after you're finished uh, because they're not cleaned up automatically. 
as uh, threads are. So as soon as the process dies, all its threads are removed. But um, when some process dies, which invoked other processes, then these other processes will still remain, even if the um, invoking um, process was uh, yeah has died, uh, was removed. And uh, this is actually not really the best practice to work with processes um, in the multiprocessing module. It would be better. Um, yeah, it would be better practice to use the with statement and use a context manager um, to create such a process here. But uh, yeah, for the sake of this simple example, I will just do it like this and um, yeah, just know that well, it works like this and then it's important that you call close, but it also works with the context manager and uh, there it's a little easier to not forget that you have to close them. Okay. But then let's run this uh, counting down example again. We'll count down five times in different processes. And you can already see this was really quick. Uh, the order is um, again random as with the multi-threading, but this only took um, 0.155 seconds now. And um, yeah, because I also don't remember what the times were from the sequential run and from the multi-threading run, I have a summary here. So um, we can see here that the sequential um, single threaded single process uh, run took 0.28 seconds. Uh, the multi threaded one took 0.39 seconds. So it was actually longer than the single threaded one. But now the multi process one um, took only 0.15 seconds. So this is uh, nearly a two times increase in speed from the single threaded one. Um, so yeah, you can see that the multiprocessing does actually make your code run faster in this case. And um, yeah, we created five processes here. So you might ask yourself why this isn't actually five times faster than the sequential one. And uh, yeah, well, this is because of the overhead that processes have. And for such a small example, this overhead is clearly visible here. And um, yeah, but this get smaller and smaller the yeah the more time this takes so the the overhead um, is basically dependent on the amount of memory that you have to copy over but if this is not too much or your computations are very long then multi processing is very efficient in um, yeah doing multiple things at once and uh, comes uh, becomes kind of negligible um, that you have this larger overhead um, in the multiprocessing. Okay, and then um, we had another example before in the multi-threading video, and this was uh, the sleep function, where uh, this function sleep just sleeps for two seconds, and then prints uh, that it has finished sleeping after that time. And um, yeah, let's just see how the multiprocessing does with this and um, execute this and you can see this took about two seconds and uh, you can also see that we had a problem here with a print and this is because multiple processes were printing at the same time and uh, the one process yeah printed while the other process hasn't printed the new line character yet so um, yeah they basically ran into each other while printing and uh, the result was just yeah the the new line of the one print um, being moved down so this print also wasn't completely correct and this is also an artifact that comes from multiprocessing but yeah this only took two seconds um, about two seconds and this is um, just the sleep time of one call for this function, but with, uh, we did this five times. And uh, you can see that, um, in fact, multiprocessing and multithreading were able to run this in two seconds, whereas um, the sequential uh, run did uh, take 10 seconds. And uh, you can also see that the multiprocessing uh, here took a bit longer than the multithreading one. And I'm not sure if this is due to just yeah random background activity on my computer or if this is 
because multiprocessing has a larger overhead. Um, as I said, this toy example doesn't really have a lot of overhead anyways, because there isn't really any memory that has to be copied over. So um, yeah, this might be from um, just random background activity on the computer or um, yeah, probably also a little bit of more overhead because a new process has to be created instead of just a new single thread.